Introducing the new Aston Martin Vantage F1 edition. Not quite the same car that Sebastian Vettel and co race on a Sunday, but one that should still sell pretty well on a Monday, given how much more focused it is than the regular V8 Vantage. The Vantage F1 costs a whopping 142 grand, and it comes with a range of upgrades that include, in case you hadn't noticed, an enormous new rear wing, a much bigger front splitter, and all sorts of tweaks to its underbody to help it generate an extra 200 kilograms of downforce. Its suspension, specifically its dampers, has also been heavily retuned, while the wheels and tires have grown to a whopping 21 inches. The twin-turbo V8 engine and 8-speed gearbox are fundamentally unchanged, but there is a bit more power thanks to new mapping, up from 503 bhp to 528 to give a touch more straight-line performance. 0 to 62 miles an hour, says Aston, takes 3.6 seconds, while the top speed is 195 miles an hour. We drove the F1 not just on the track at Silverstone, but also on the roads that surround the famous old circuit. And it was a pretty damn impressive car, full stop. Good enough to level with the mighty new Porsche 911 GT3? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. It does feel like a pretty serious bit of kit, the Vantage F1. Literally from the moment you start driving it. You can really feel that the suspension is, is harder, the dampers. They don't just feel stiffer full stop, they just feel more sophisticated, like they're actually doing more things, taking care of more of the dynamics and are basically just doing a better job. You can really notice it in the steering as well. There haven't really been any changes at all to the fundamental mechanics of the steering system. But because of the front suspension changes and modifications, because of the damper changes, because the back's that much stiffer, all of that has a knock-on effect to the steering. And this thing has really, really rather lovely steering, I have to say. I mean, the Vantage steers pretty nicely full stop, but this, this is a, in another league. And you get this lovely suede-rimmed wheel. The new dampers make a big difference to the F1's vertical control on a circuit and on the road. And although you can't go quite quick enough on this particular track to notice the new aero benefits, the F1 does feel more stable, but also more playful when you're going for it. It sounds pretty tasty too. You've also got two-stage ESP and traction control. One long press on the magic button with the sliding car on it and you get off traction and ESP track. If you then press it and hold it, the ESP track system setting disappears, so you're totally on your own. You've got no ESP and you've got no traction control, which means you can do that kind of stuff in it. Really, really lovely brakes. Really lovely feel from the rear axle. Mega noise from, from the exhaust at all times. And just this lovely front engine, classic front engine to rear wheel drive. Larry hot rod style balance to the chassis. Feels sort of refreshingly old fashioned this car. And I mean that in the most complimentary of ways. But it, you know, it doesn't feel old school. Even though you can do that. It's just, it just feels flipping marvelous to be honest. It's expensive not going to make that many of them and I think if you're you know if you're going to have one of these cars if you're going to have a big hairy V8 Vantage you might as well have the best of the lot because <laughs> not all of them will do that kind of thing but this one will and it feels robust as well this car it feels as if you could do this 
all day long in it. On the road, the Vantage F1 looks, feels and sounds extremely focused, yes. But in no way is it undrivable. In fact, it's really quite civilised. It rides well if you dial the dampers back to their most comfortable setting. Tyre noise is extremely well suppressed given how much rubber there is. And the suspension is surprisingly refined too, despite being a fair bit stiffer at the back. You could therefore drive the Vantage F1 from London to Scotland and back, no problem. And in this particular respect, it probably has a broader appeal beside some of Porsche's GT cars specifically the new GT3, which has become maybe a touch too track orientated for its own good by comparison. But even though it's a surprisingly decent road car, the track is the Vantage F1's most natural habitat. Do you know, it really is a great car, the Aston Martin Vantage F1. But the crunch question is, can it genuinely compete with the new GT3 from Porsche? Or is there still a gap? Well, look, until we put them back to back on both road and track, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. To watch more videos like this, click on our logo to subscribe.